Disconnecting the sensor for low oil level solved my engine starting and running problems, so my sawmill was back in business. Now I could get busy milling this big pile of free logs I got from a neighbor. There would be a few challenges. Included are three pine logs, and I've never milled pine. Another challenge is these trees held a treehouse at one time, so there will be nails. And one more thing. Two of the logs are too big for the mill. First, I cut the pine. The pine has a lot of pitch in it, and I was eager to see how well my homemade blade scraper would keep the pitch off the blade. The first pine log on the mill was not straight. It would take several cuts just to get it squared up. Because the log was so heavy and irregular, I was not able to get it clamped tightly. The log rocked back and forth, which changed tension on the blade, which made the sawmill rock back and forth, which made the log rock back and forth more, which made, well, you get the idea. First thing we're going to do is put on a new blade. No, oh, that's mighty sharp. I think I want to turn this 180. It's twisted every which way. It's got to come out just a little bit. There. Since I installed a quick cam clamp, I almost never have to use these original screw clamps that take so much time to tighten. But for this log, I used everything I could. And the log bowed out so far on this side, I couldn't even use the cam clamp. A hump on one side of the log means horns on the other side.
This is one of those occasions when the blade guard gets in the way. I turned it up out of the way to get past the end of the log. Now what? I couldn't find anything on the track. The log wasn't too wide. Why did it stop? These inch and a half slabs were short, but wide. I'd resaw them to get something out of them. When the logs were delivered, I piled them as close to the mill as I could to leave room in the driveway to get vehicles past. It makes for very little room to work until I get another log mill. One of the first logs I cut when I got the mill was a large redwood log, too big for the mill, and I had to turn the blade guard up out of the way to get past it, and I forgot to put it back down, which got me a membership in the club of those who have cut into log stops. I didn't want to do that again. I knocked this off. The zerk fitting had this a little too close to that log. Without this little add-on, the water just dribbles down all over everything. This leads it out and off the tip of that wire directly onto the blade. This blade is still pretty clean. We're cutting uh, pine here, pitchy. pretty much ignore everything past this knot. Eight, eight, six, six, and 
irrelevant. Seven. I think go six. So I have to take this off, put this big alder on, because it's in the way of everything. I can't go any lower. The sawmill was as low as it could go and still get past that alder. And how am I going to get it back on here? The alder log was too heavy to hold with my shins. A helpful observer arrived just in time. It's on top on the left. This board is too steep, I think. I wonder if I can stand on it and get enough leverage. Probably not. Oh, maybe so. Um, Put a little piece of wood, one of those smaller ones, yeah, on the board so this won't roll. Put the, put the face down. Put the flat side down. I think. Yeah, perfect. Move, sweetie, move. It's extremely heavy. I can break it in half. No. She really did want to help. Okay, now put that little piece up higher to hold this again. As close as it'll go. There it is. Yeehaw! Thank you, sweetie.
Many of the logs in this pile of free wood are larger than what I'm used to milling. So ten high here, and fourteen high here. That should really come up two inches. A scissors jack would be more practical and easier to use, but this small floor jack is what I had handy. I was worried about nails. I knew there were some in some of these logs. I can't use a metal detector if the wood is on or near the mill. If it's sensitive enough to pick up nails, it's sensitive enough to pick up the steel rails of the sawmill. The bark on this log was very loose. Removing it seemed like an easy way to check for nails. I added this board to the growing pile. It would be resawed later. Resawed? Resawn. Anyway, saw it again.
one complete turn of the crank will yield a board exactly one and a half inches thick. I didn't need the water drip on for this soaking wet green alder. I had it on for the pine and forgot to turn it off. That's what makes me glad I remembered to put the blade guard back in place. The bottom of this cant is not flat. I didn't want to loosen the log clamp with the blade in the cut. Again, I have to wonder though, if the blade guard was not there, would I be more careful about checking the heights of the log stops? That's as low as I can go there, because this log over here is in the way. The one we did not finish, because this one that's on the bed now was in the way. So now what I gotta do, take these two boards off and the remaining cant, get that first one back up on here, and after these two are done, we can start operating normally, or what passes for normally in my world. Oh, the reason I turned this one over is to get more weight on the ends, because this wants to curl up. Um, which means in the middle it's going to bow up, already has, uh, so the more weight I can keep on that, the more even the boards are going to be. And I don't have a place for all these boards. I really have not figured out how I'm going to do this yet. There's not enough space to get ramps in there. I can get this one in.
It was turning into a long day. Even though I didn't get much done, it seemed like a long day. I hurried through this pine log so I could finish that curved alder log and come to a good stopping place. I know I was getting tired because I hit a log stop yet again, saved yet again by the blade guard. I don't understand why so many people don't bother to use it. Cutting this one in half and cutting a half inch off of this one, end up with three, three inch and a half inch. All goes well. Now this one is bowed up, so I will walk on it. Okay, this will be the last cut today. No idea what time it is, but it's late. It's not the first time I've walked ahead of the blade to keep a curved board flat to get an even cut. I tried clamping it to the bunks and removing the clamps before the blade got to them, but that's extremely time consuming and tedious. I know you probably think this is unsafe. I don't. There's an inch and a half of wood between the blade and my feet. I think it's much more dangerous to drive down a two lane highway with cars coming the other direction separated from you by only a line in the road. If you have a specific reason why you think this is unsafe, something that I'm not seeing, please let me know. Don't make general comments like, oh, you're in front of the sawmill, that's unsafe. Tell me why. This is a little difficult in that I have trouble pulling the mill because I can't get enough leverage. This only works because I have my operating handle set so that I operate the sawmill from in front of it, not from behind it. This works for me. Don't try this at home. I guess I got to say that. Uh, this is not for educational purposes. This is just how I do things. I feel safe doing it. You probably don't. If you don't, don't do it. I was glad to see this day in. More adventures to come. So far, I haven't hit any nails. That will change the next time I come out to the sawmill. Thanks for watching. See you next time.